One of our primary jobs in the studio is to manage levels, right? When we're recording, we want to make sure it's not clipping. When we're mixing, we want to make sure everything is balanced and doesn't clip our mix. And there's approximately 7 billion ways for the volume to go wrong when working on a piece of music. Thankfully, Studio One gives us a lot of options for places to adjust that gain, to adjust that volume in different places throughout our signal flow, which is really handy. But if you're new to this, it can be confusing. So it's a concept you'll hear called gain staging. That word is complicated. Some people take it to mean other things. I'm just referring to it in the literal sense of staging the gain, the volume from one phase of the process to the next. If you think about a guitar player with a pedal board who has, um, let's say, an overdrive pedal, a compressor pedal, um, another overdrive pedal, and a reverb pedal. Ideally, when, when that is stayed, gain staged properly, at least for me, when I click on and off each of those effects, I want it to maintain a consistent volume. Now, now the drive, maybe it gets a little bit louder, but not like dramatically louder such that if I turn it on and off, you go from not hearing my guitar to hearing too much guitar, right? And so in mixing, there's a similar, we have to keep those kinds of things in mind. We've got the raw audio file, but then it's going to go through a series of plugins and it might go off to an effect and a lot of things might happen. So how do we manage that volume in a way that gives us good results, that maintains a consistent volume, that doesn't like completely jack things up and make things clip everywhere and cause a lot of frustration. So I can't answer all of those questions in a single video, but I'm going to answer a really common one uh, that someone emailed me about. So thank you, Tom, who emailed me uh, about how to, wh what are the different ways to think about some of the ways we adjust the volume of the actual piece of audio itself. So there are four ways that I can adjust the volume of this audio file here. This is a vocal. So there, the, the obvious way when you first get into recording, you think, okay, I can move the fader up and down. That is a way to adjust the volume, but that's not even one of the four that I'm going to talk about. There are four ways to adjust the volume of this piece of audio before it ever hits the top of this channel. So the mixer in Studio One, if you think of it like an actual analog mixer, if you've ever worked on an analog mixer or you have the at least the most basic understanding, you know that if you plug a microphone into channel one, the first knob that you hit is called gain. It's the preamp level. You're setting the volume of the signal that's going to go through the rest of the console, right? So channel one has a bunch of stuff on it, right? It has EQs, maybe has compressors, has different auxiliary sends, and then it has a fader at the bottom. So everything runs from top to bottom. It's the same in Studio One. Everything runs through this channel, starting up here at the top, and then going through to the bottom, which is the fader, okay? So the fader is adjusting the volume of this channel after a bunch of stuff has happened to it, and we may have reason to want to adjust the volume before it goes through that section. So I want to show you the different ways to do it, um, starting with what I would call event gain. So different sections in Studio One. So this, is a, this piece of audio in Studio One is called an event. It is a chunk of of audio. It is a thing that I can select and move around. Okay, That is an event. I can chop up this event into multiple events. So now this middle one, we can actually just for the sake of showing it, this red one is a different event from this yellow one. They're technically part of the same piece of audio, but now I can operate on these independently because they're separate events. Okay, So event gain is one of the simplest forms that you can use, and it's easy to find. It's right here. So if you have a, an event selected, the dead center of that event at the top, you're going to see this cute little square. It's like a little handle. And if I click and drag that, it allows me to drag up or down to bring the volume of this clip down or up. And I can just keep going. I think there's a max. Yes, 20, 24 dB. I can go all the way up or 24 dB the other way. Ooh, I can go down negative 40 dB. So you got a lot of play there. But I can come in and I can just adjust the level of this. I use this event gain. I used to use it a lot. I don't anymore because of some of the tools that Studio One has developed since I started using it all those years ago. But I still will use this for very basic stuff like 
Um, oh man, he, uh, the this vocal is so much. You know, maybe it comes in like this. The person saying this line a lot quieter, and I could use compression to try to balance those out, or use volume automation to balance those out. But honestly, what would be easiest is to just use clip gain or event gain here, and to just move it, and honestly, to eyeball it and say, okay, those look about those blobs look about the same size. Good to go. This is especially helpful for like if you do different guitar parts and maybe they're wildly different in volume. You'd like them to be more consistent without getting into the plug-in world yet. This allows you to do that. So I can very easily, I could select, let's say another example, like say this phrase was too quiet. I can select this. By the way, if you select it like that and just double click, it turns it, oh, double click on the top section. It turns it into its own event and then I can go like that. See, so now those are a little, maybe a little louder or whatever. I can adjust that volume. So that is event gain, super handy. All it's doing is adjusting the volume of this before it hits the fade or hits the fader or hits the channel even. This is kind of the, at the base level, here is the audio, we're doing some stuff to the audio. That's event gain. Now, when using event gain, one of the tools you can use is called normalize. Real quickly, if you ever think, okay, wait, how do I know how much gain I've added here? You can hover over this, you can click it, and it'll tell you. But also, if you press F4, it opens up this super handy inspector view. And what a lot of people may not realize is if you drag this bottom section up, inspector view is divided into basically three sections. The top section has to do with kind of what's going on with this event, um, such as like, layers, uh, if it's doing any time stretching, things like that. This middle section is just a cool kind of compressed view of the channel on the console on the mixer. This bottom section has to do with stuff related to a specific event. So this changes when I select different events, even on the same channel. And what we can see here is I've increased the gain. Let's say I increase the gain of this by eight decibels or something like that. If we come over here and look, we can see this event has a gain of plus 8.7. It's all documented here, so it's not like this big mystery. I can click on this one and see that it hasn't had any gain change, and I can actually even click on this and drag up and down and make adjustments right here. So if I'm, you know, if I'm adjusting every other section of something and I want to make sure they're all the same, I could perhaps use that to do that. Uh, I can also adjust the fade ins and the fade outs, which I never do from here. That's easier to do from here. But that's where that data lives, if you're curious. Um, okay, so that is that is um, the event gain. But specifically, the one I want to bring your attention to is this normalize button. So what does that do? So if I command click on this event and just make sure everything, all these points go back to zero to kind of where they were. If I hit normalize, what happens? Okay, I'm clicking normalize on and off, and that audio is jumping, but it's jumping to a very specific level. What what is that level? I can also use on the on the Mac option N for normalize. I believe that's Alt N on the PC. That triggers that same little check box. What is that doing? So it's running a very, very simple formula. It's saying what is the maximum peak of this piece of audio? And if that peak is at minus 10 decibels, then it turns everything up 10 decibels. So it turns it up to zero, to basically just, and anything over zero is clipping, so it turns it up to zero. So this piece of audio is as loud as it can possibly be without clipping. That doesn't mean it can't get louder with things like compression and limiting, but it finds the loudest peak, and it says, you, come all the way to the top. That's all it is. It's not doing anything to the sound. It doesn't make anything sound different. It's just volume. Why would that be handy? Well, let's say, for example, I want to turn this. This vocal's real quiet. And I want to turn it up, but I'm not sure how much to turn it up. And I'm, I'm afraid if I go too far, I will go past that, that clipping mark, right? S on some level, that's not that big of a deal because we're, we're working on like floating 64-bit, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know the techn technical terms, but the internal engine of Studio One can probably handle it even if I do just go nuts with this. But from a, just knowing that I'd like to keep this below clipping from a theoretical level means if I go, if I know I want to turn it up, sometimes what I'll do is I'll normalize it first. Now I know this is as high as I can go, and then I can pull it back down. Typically when I normalize it, it's too loud. But now I know I've hit the max of what this track can be without crossing the zero clipping point, and then I can pull it back to that nice, comfortable place where I want to be. I don't do this as much anymore. 
but it is available, and that's what normalizing is. I'm not going to get into the, the whole normalizing everything to a certain level. I don't think people like to do that across their entire tracks in their session. I think it's a waste of time. I would recommend not doing it, but that's another conversation for another day. All right, so that's normalization. Now, clip gain. I've shown you event gain. So this is an event, um, but it's also kind of considered a clip. I know that can be confusing. Let me show you the difference. Let's work on this section over here. If I right-click on this, and I go to event, uh, no, I go to audio, I always forget where it is, and I go find the, oh, you know what, never mind, forget what I just said, right click on it, and right here you'll see gain envelope, and I can check that box to turn the gain envelope on, and what that does, across this entire track, it adds this horizontal line, and it looks a lot like volume automation, and it behaves a lot like volume automation, except volume automation happens at the fader level, which remember, the fader is at the very end of the chain. This is essentially volume automation that's happening before going to the mixer and going through the, the whole mixer channel. So what I can do here is I can add different elements to this gain envelope and I can like curve the thing and all that and this is happening on the audio level before it ever goes into the channel so this is great for the the event gain is great for taking whole sections and just moving them universally but this is great if I want to take a section and it really needs to kind of ramp up as I'm singing that note but then it needs to drop off again and it's kind of takes a little more finesse then clip gain can be really useful for that it's also really useful if you've got some sort of weird problem like looks like there's kind of a weird sound right here I don't want to get rid of it but I want it to kind of get out of the way and to still sound smooth so I could do something like this where I'm bringing it way down and it's going to bring it down, but everything's going to still sound okay because it's the same audio file. I haven't actually edited it at all. I've just inserted a little bit of volume automation there. So that's clip gain. It's a clip gain envelope. That's a newer feature. And the final piece of the puzzle, this is the one, honestly, I use the most. If you open up your mixer, you press F3 to open up the console. If the thing at the very top of your console is the insert bar, you're missing something that I think you should turn on. So click on the wrench and find where it says input controls and turn that on. And what you'll notice is you have this knob here and then this phase switch here. The knob is what I wanna talk about here. This is now just a volume knob that gives us 24 dB up or down that is affecting this, the volume of this signal as it starts to feed through this console. So everything I've shown you in this video adjusts the volume pre-console pre um, but it's different ways of doing it. This one is not something you can automate. It's just a just a kind of a rough, just going to turn everything up by 6 dB or so. Um, this one, the clip gain, you can do really lots of finesse with. The event gain is almost identical to this clip gain, except it doesn't, the clip gain here, I'm sorry, the audio input gain here, there's a lot of different words to remember. The input gain doesn't give me any visual stuff over here. So if I've got a track that comes in, it's super hot. If I come in here and I turn it down like this, part of me doesn't like the visual clutter of having a two-tone track here with this like this kind of horizontal bar. I'd rather it look something like this and I just turn it down here. It's doing the same thing, but I, I don't have to worry about visually it looking different up here. And this only applies to my mix, whereas the raw audio track is basically unaffected. Okay, so I know that's a lot to cover and it's a little more advanced, but for those of you who were curious about that, that should answer all those questions of when to use each of them, what they're for. And I would say they're all useful. I use some more than others, but it's good to know how they work and that they exist because you may find certain situations where clip gain is really the only solution that makes sense in that situation. So it's nice to know. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.